Good morning, Year 9. Um, Mr. Sloan actually here just to talk to you a bit about some revision. So you have now completed your sustaining ecosystems topic you have been working on during your homeschooling. So over the next few weeks leading to the end of the school year, we are going to start revising the topics that you've been covering this year. Now, just to finish off where we've, what we've been doing, today's lesson will be focused around sustaining ecosystems. So I want you to make sure that today it's just tying off those loose ends of anything that you're unsure about. And I'm going to go through a few revision techniques for you to be working through to help you do this. So continue with the rest of the video to be able to find out a little bit more. So one of the key revision tools that I would like you to be using then is threshold concept grids. Now I've attached one of these as part of your homework on Show My Homework. Now, you will get a, basically a two page grid with lots of different questions to do with the topic and it reviews everything you've covered within this sustaining ecosystems topic. Now, the aim is for you to try and complete as much of this grid without looking at any of your previous work. So as you can see on the side of the slide here, I'll give you some tips of how to go about doing this. Now, first of all, you wanna try and use one colored pen either black or blue maybe, to try and complete as many boxes as you can without looking at anything. The second thing you want to then try and do is if you've then got any gaps, try and use a different colour pen and use some visual clues. So maybe use a couple of notes from this slide, maybe look at some of your um, key images and things that you've used during the topic to try and fill in some gaps. And then finally is where I come in. Now, this video is only focusing on the case studies that you've been doing most recently. But if you've got any questions about any of the other earlier parts of the topic, to do with the general stuff to do with ecosystems or rainforests or um, polar regions, just drop me an email and I can help you. So the idea is to try and complete as many of those boxes as you can. And the more you can do, the more you know that you've learned it and you understand it. If you're struggling to complete these, Maybe it's an opportunity for you to go back through the work that I've been setting on showing my homework just to check that you did complete all the tasks properly and that if there is something that you're not sure about, you touch base with me to try and help with. So there's some top tips for you to get started. This shows you an example of what you might write in some of the boxes. So I've done the first two for you. So what is an ecosystem? So I've given there then a definition that you may use to say what an ecosystem is. Now, remember, on these grids, you are not trying to write everything. You should be limiting how much you write. It's about picking out the most important parts. What do you need to know? What's going to be the fundamental key things that you're going to take with you and remember that's going to help you with your learning? So they're just two examples. So remember, Keep it short, keep it focused. What's most important? Now, the rest of these slides have been used and recorded already by myself at a previous point from the year 10. So I will look a little bit different, but hopefully it will give you some key ideas, especially focusing on those case studies from this topic. The Antarctic Treaty, the Union Glacier, which you've been doing the last couple of weeks, and before that, the rainforest example you looked at a few weeks um, just before half term or just after half term, Crocker Range Biosphere Reserve. So please watch the rest of this video to give you some ideas to help complete the sections of the threshold concept grid using um, this information. So today we're going to look at systems sustaining ecosystems case study knowledge. You should have been doing that work over the last week. So you should feel confident with the case study knowledge. And today I just want to look at, over some of the exam questions that I set you and just give you some feedback in terms of where we need to tweak. A lot of people are kind of making the same little mistakes. And if we can get those right, then we should be in a really strong position going into next year. So in the spec, we can see that there's three kind of key parts that we need to be focusing on. So at the top bit there, you can see that we've got the red box showing that attempts to sustainably manage an area of tropical rainforest. So this is our Crocker Range Biosphere Reserve case study um, that we need to look at. At the bottom, we actually for polar environments need two. We need to be looking at a small scale example, so Union Glacier, tourism, and then we need to look at a global example, which is Antarctic Treaty. 
Now, from the exam questions I received, some people are getting confused what it means by small scale and global scale. So you need to make sure you know that spec understanding to make sure you're getting that right. So the Crocker Range Biosphere Reserve. So you need to know some key basics about where it is, what is it like, what's it aimed to do. So on these slides, and you can pause and read through these in your own time, these are some key points that I picked out about the case study. We want to make sure we've got an understanding about the basics, and then we can also talk about how sustainable it is. So when we talk about environmentally sustainable, we can look at these kind of features, picking out examples of animals that we see in the Borneo rainforest and in the Crocker Range Biosphere Reserve. And they are, it's environmentally sustainable because they're protecting these in species. They're stopping them, these endemic species, which means they can only be found here. So we must protect them. So we need to show that that is environmentally sustainable by protecting them. But also we want to show that how it can be socially and economically. So looking at the things to do with tourism that happens there, the long term research, OK, looking at what local people, the 52 villages and the small scale agriculture that happens there, rubber tree plantations. This is all great place specific information that we don't need lots of. But if we can just get that little bit in, it shows good knowledge. Finally, when we're kind of looking at the success of this, we must be able to talk about how sustainable or unsustainable it is and it's quite hard to find some stuff about this about unsustainability but the, one of the best things you can write about is the Kaidoan dam in Borneo now there are plans to build this dam in in the as part of the Crocker Range Biosphere Reserve even though it should be protected however there's such a demand for water for the people that live there remember this is an area that's probably most likely EDC um, area that there's many poor people who need support but this may come at cost of the, um, the environment. So again, you need to make sure that you can show, that you can evaluate both sides of the argument. In our second part then, we've got our two polar, <coughs> excuse me, case studies. We've got our Union Glacier, which is our small scale tourism, and our global example, the Antarctic Treaty. Now the Antarctic Treaty, okay, if you remember, so the treaty is this agreement that looks to protect Antarctica from certain activities. OK, now only things that can really happen there is scientific research, protection of wildlife in the fragile environment and some tourism. Now, when you're doing your revision for this, you should have looked in some detail about kind of the some of the rules that people have to follow. Now, again, we've got to be able to talk about how this is successful, and that's quite easy because obviously these rules are in place, which does help protect Antarctica. But again, talking about the unsustainability is a little bit harder. Now, what things to consider maybe to look into is, for example, one of the rules is that you cannot do oil mining, but that only is in place until 2048. So if the demand for oil is still there and they need to access it, those rules might be relaxed to allow people to use the minerals that Antarctica has. So is that sustainable in the long term future? Maybe less so. So again, maybe look into that. All right. Plus, tourism obviously does take place. You can't stop every single tourist from doing some sort of damage. So again, you really need to consider what, you know, how you can talk about that and make sure that you talk about that, you know, the first is socially and environmentally sustainable aspects of it. But obviously tourism provides a lot of money and that ties into our other case study as well. And that is the Union Glacier. So Union Glacier, OK, is a tourist kind of camp that people can go to. If you've not been on the Union Glacier camp website, please do so. It gives you some ideas of costings and some of the activities people can do there. So really, really useful OK, websites to kind of show you what they try to do to try and be as sustainable as possible and protect the Antarctica even when tourists are there. But as we said, tourists may kind of take advantage of this and may not follow the rules as, as to be exact. So again, having ideas, use those kind of you cut your um, knowledge organizers, things like that to help you pick out some of those different arguments. Finally, then, OK, you can have a go at kind of mind mapping some ideas to do with Union Glacier. So you see on the top right, you've got some toilets that are used. And again, it's tried to separate so that waste can be disposed of out into uh, Chile or South America. You've got the camps that aren't permanent in the top left. OK, but again, you can see tourists interfering with wildlife. Finally, then, is the exam questions, OK, that you need to 
submit via email. So these, so a lot of these exam questions have been sent to me, and the kind of same mistake is being made, okay, in both areas. So if this is an example of an exam answer I got sent by one student. A sustainably managed area of tropical rainforest is the Crocker Range Biosphere Reserve in Borneo, Malaysia. The biosphere is successful, so talking about the positives here, is because it helps protect endemic species such as the cloud leopard, orangutan, and protects cultural activities of 400 small communities and 300 plant species. Fantastic. Really good place-specific detail in there. However, it's missing a key thing. This means that. Where's the explanation? It needs to show why is this then sustainable. It is environmentally sustainable because... If we look at the second paragraph, however, the reserve is unsuccessful because there are still plans to build a dam in the area, which means that the village will wildlife will be affected. It doesn't fully stop tourist activities, which could damage the ecosystem there. So we've got a couple of ideas, but they're not really, there's not, here we're actually lacking the place detail bit, and also we're not developing those ideas fully. So on this next slide, you should now be able to see, okay, a model answer. Now here you can see that it's talk, going to use the same parts of the answer, but just with that little bit extra detail, which shows. So in that first paragraph, we see it says, this means that it is successful environmentally sustainable because it prevents species from going extinct. So we can research them further and possibly provide medical support in the future, which is also socially sustainable. However, the reserve is unsuccessful because there's still plans to build a dam, the Kuadan Dam. So again, place detail now. In the area which means that wildlife is effective and which could lead to flooding parts of the Crocker Range. Further down then it then goes on to say this is not good for the ecosystem as the wildlife is damaged and could be introduced for alien species. It is sustainable, uh, not sustainable because we want to preserve species and keep biodiversity strong in this area. Some will argue it's socially sustainable though as water is much needed for the local people. So again we're going into that bit more detail. Finally <coughs> Same thing needs to come into place for the last question. Make sure you're showing both sides of the argument. So here we can see that this person has written a little bit more detail. There's some good links. Again, there could be a little bit more place detail in here in the second, in the two main paragraphs. But again, what we are seeing is that they're kind of explaining that kind of that sustainable aspect. But even then, it could be taken further. So really try to get that into your exam answers.